So thank you all for coming. I can't believe how many people are here after all those social events, all those presentations. I can't believe everybody's still alive. <clears throat> okay, so the title of this talk is called Money Biz Open Bank Transaction Data for Visualization and Beyond. It's uh, a team of people from the University of Nottingham, uh, some master students, a former PhD student, and I'm going to just do my best to, to present the work on the uh, at behalf of the group. Aleph has since graduated and is now uh, working at a, as a staff member at Kokova, Kokorova University in Turkey. Okay, that's my. <clears throat> So a little background behind the Money Based Project. It started out as a collaboration with a local <coughs> company named Oakbrook. And Oakbrook is specializing in risk assessment for lending. So you can apply for a short term, very fast, small loan through Oakbrook. Right? If you need five or 10,000 pounds, really fast, like within the next few hours, you can apply with Oakbrook, and they'll give you uh, some sort of risk assessment in only 60 seconds, and you can get approved for a loan very, very quickly, right? So they have access to millions of bank transactions, so as part of the application, you submit one year's worth of bank transactions, and then the risk is assessed based on, the, on your history. So that was the inspiration behind this project, but as we, uh, you know, tried to make progress, of course, we had some delays in actually obtaining that transaction data from Oakbrook and setting up the collaboration. So there were like over six, six months worth of just administrative delays, right? Probably a lot of you have experienced similar things. So, we had a plan B, and we found a volunteer who would let us analyze their bank transactions. Basically, that, that's the inspiration behind this project. So, I think the motivation is pretty clear, right? With the evolution of financial technology, the, the whole FinTech movement, right? That the importance of analyzing financial transactions is growing, right? Growing in importance and growing in popularity. As the number of transactions grow, so does the necessity of visual analytics tools. However, there's, it's difficult to get access to data like this. Right? Real bank, tri bank transaction data is difficult to access due to privacy and security concerns, both by the retail customers and the banks. So you have a double, a, a double uh, set of challenges. So what we're presenting is the first real-world, anonymized, open retail bank transaction data set. That's what this short paper is about. So it's the first one of its kind. It's the first open bank transaction data set from, from an anonymized retail customer. It also features manual, semiotic, and automatic categorizations of each transaction. And we have some initial imperfect visual explorations of the data set as well that we're going to show. And a lot of us are familiar with these classic benchmark data sets, right? We have one of the very first classic sort of benchmark data sets, the teapot, right? Another very popular one is the Stanford Bunny. And at the time these authors released these classic data sets, they had no idea that they were going to be featured in millions and millions of papers for decades to come, right? We have the, the Tornado data set from uh, Roger Crawford at Ohio State University, right? The Stanford Bunny. We have the Iris data set, right? That was released a long time ago and is used in a lot of high dimensional visualization papers. And of course, we have the CARS data set. Right? So we're kind of hoping that the Money Biz data set contributes to the community in a similar way, essentially. There is a lot of related work in terms of finance and visualization and visual analytics, but if you look carefully, um, it's very, very difficult to find 
publicly available available data. So when you when you scan through this literature, it's really not easy. And sometimes we have the experience where we would see open financial data, but only to discover that it wasn't so open after all. Like we would go down some sort of a rat hole of mouse clicks and never actually obtain the financial data. So a lot of false advertising is out there as well for open bank transaction data. So the data span spans seven years from July 2015 to July 2022. There are over 6,500 retail bank transactions. Each transaction has a date, a type of transaction, a description, a short description, an amount, and an ending balance. And there it is. There's the, the URL to the, to the open bank transaction data. You can also find a link on my webpage if you look carefully. You know, or maybe at some point you'll be able to Google money base and find it as well. A little bit about the categorization. There's an automatic categorization and that's done by the bank. Right? The bank applies an automatic kind of categorization to each transaction. Then we worked on a kind of semi-automatic Python script to add categories. It's a combination of manual work, essentially doing uh, based on search terms, and then based on those search terms, assigning a category. But the search terms are entered manually, actually, ultimately. And we also did a kind of manual categorization. Right? We added these categories like shopping, travel, entertainment, food, dining, Amazon, health, fitness, and so on. So lots of lots of manual work went into that. And as you might imagine, this is certainly not perfect, right? The categorization has errors. So these are just some very uh, initial and also imperfect images from the data set. This is what the transactions look like over the time span of seven years. And these are, these are color coded based on the automatic categories in the, uh, that assigned by the bank, right? But you can see some deviant behavior, for example, in 2021, it has some unusual, uh, an unusual number of transactions in that category. So there's a lot of history embedded in this, in this uh, data set. And this is another hierarchical view of the data. The, the, the top level of the hierarchy is like either credit, money coming into the account, or money exiting the account. And then we can subdivide the incoming and the outgoing into several different categories. Okay, that's it. Short and sweet. Thank you everybody for uh, surviving this time. Thank you very much. Actually, yeah, it was a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Yeah. Uh, we have time for some questions. Yeah, we have one there. Thank you very much. One of the reasons for this kind of data set is for fraud detection. Are there yes. any fraud data points in the data set? <laughs> fraud uh, either false positive or false negatives? <laughs> Well, I could, I could say you have to find that out. <laughs> it depends on how you define fraud, I would say. Because uh, you can have two fraud coming from the retail customer, but you can also have fraud coming from a, from a, a vendor, right? So I would, I would argue yet that yes, there are some fraudulent transactions from vendors. But it's not so easy to, to detect. It's not like this this customer stole somebody's credit card and <laughs> went uh, on a heyday or something. You won't find that. But there are some fraudulent transactions from vendors. Any other questions? Questions? Yeah, there's one here. Daniel from Michigan University. Uh, I have a question about these categories. Um, are there new types of payment options and stuff 
like that uh, across uh, the time. So I can imagine that, uh, for example, credit card could be changed for something. I'm not sure how it is in the UK, but like that appear. But that was, wasn't existing in 2015, but is now... Okay, or okay is so it? the categories change over time. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that is possible. I don't know the answer to that question, but I, can, I definitely think it's possible, yes, that some of the categories changed over time, yes. In fact, when we were looking up these automatic categories assigned by the bank, we found some inconsistencies. So, that even there, we're, we're not 100% sure, actually. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised that there were inconsistencies amongst the automatic bank categories when we, when we looked them up. Yeah, so you're saying that the same thing could be categorized as different, uh, into different things over time? Yeah, and an, an open question is how accurate are the automatic bank? transactions as well. How, how, how well does that categorization actually work? So there's a lot of unsolved problems here. So lots of future, it's all future work. Like this one. Uh, last one, we have one last question. Is anybody in the room interested in finance and this? This combination of topics? A paper will just make a statement on that question mm -hmm. about a similar problem because the same trend of this data not being available emerged. And if it was done for search with industry partners, then the replicability was out of the question because of the privacy of the data. So yes, that's I'm right. Glad that's that, right. I'm glad that there is a research in that direction. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your talk, and one last round of applause for all of us. I wish you a meeting time at the remaining events of the conference and for a safe journey home. Thank you.